All right, we've spoken about the four pillars of cooperative governance, how we're all in this to have impact, and the co-op success is how we achieve that impact, and that we do this through teaming, accountable empowerment, strategic leadership, and democracy, all based in the cooperative principles and values. What I'm gonna focus in now is a component of this, which is the strategic leadership component. Now, when we're talking about strategic leadership, it's, we can break it into those two words. One, leadership is about the direction that we are heading and how we are moving in that direction. The strategic component is that we take it in consideration of the context that we're in over time. So we have direction and movement in context over time. That leads us to this next model, which is useful for us to think about what are the things that are important as we think about where are we going and how we're going to get there. I'm gonna put this into a specific uh, sort of framework called fa smart fast moves, but it can really be used for anything where you have a question in front of you, a knowable question. Particularly here, I'm gonna use the context of a knowable question of a co-op that's in a growth mode that says we're growing, we just don't know exactly what our next move will be. Why is that? because retail food cooperatives are often needing to be uh, taking advantage of windows of opportunity in the marketplace when a retail location opens up or when an opportunity to partner with someone appears or other things that all of a sudden the opportunity is in front of you. So how do we get to the place where we're making smart, fast moves toward these when that opportunity opens? Because when a window opens, it will also close. And if we do slow, dumb moves, oftentimes we'll miss the opportunities that we want to have or we'll make mistakes and do things that actually aren't in line with what we're trying to accomplish to have the impact that we want in the first place. So what are the necessary ingredients to be able to make moves that are smart and fast? First of all, we have to have shared agreement and alignment around the vision of our future. Oftentimes, the vision of our future is articulated in our ends. They'll also be articulated in other ways in the organization, if the organization builds mission statements that are consistent with the ends, or time-bound strategic uh, objectives that are multi-year in fashion that are consistent with the ends. But regardless, all of that captures the ends. And so this is important because then, when an opportunity comes up, we're not asking what are we trying to achieve, what, are we tr what sort of impact are we having in the world, we've already built that in. That's number one. The second thing is to ask ourselves, what are the foundations that are necessary in order for us to make a smart, fast move once this question mark is answered, once we know what we're going to try to do? It comes into at least four components of the foundations. The first, of all, first one is culture. We have to ask ourselves, what is the culture that we need inside our organization in order for us to be able to make this smart, fast move and then solidify the move so that we're having sustainable impact? It's not enough to just hope that our culture will be there. We need to plan and build a culture that will support this. Secondly, we need to think about talent. We have to ask ourselves, what is the talent profile? What are the types of skills, knowledge, abilities that we need and attitudes that we need inside our cooperative and in our partnerships at the board level, at the GM level, at the staff level, in our membership, in our customer base, and ask ourselves, what sort of talent do we need? And then we can go about trying to build that so that when we, this question mark turns into an actual opportunity, we can pursue it in a fast way. We're ready. The next is systems. We must build systems that are ready to take advantage of this next opportunity. These can be board systems, they can be internal operating systems from financial to human resources to things that are happening right on our floor. But we've got to get those systems in a place that we're not taking too large of a step up. The systems are next level systems ready to take advantage of that opportunity. And finally, of course, all of this has to be funded with capital. We have to have capital ability to gain the capital that we need in order to be able to use the systems with these talented folks inside this culture in order to pursue the vision once this, this is answered. Now, all of this is what we would think about inside the cooperative, but that's not the whole story. Remember, I talked about, we talk about the entire context 
of where we want to go with the cooperative in strategic leadership. So we have to also consider the external environment. So what should we look at? Well, there's a whole bunch of different things that we could look at, but a lot of people have looked at this for a long time and they've said, hmm, we should look at two major areas. The first one is our macro environment. And the second one is our industry environment, which can also be thought of as our micro environment. Now in the macro environment, again, you can look at many things, but uh, over, across organizations, these are the things that tend to be important. First of all, it, we use an acronym called PESTL. And PESTL stands for asking ourselves, what in the macro environment, in the political, economic, sociocultural, technological, legal and natural environmental things around us are going to impact our ability to be successful. Now these can be looked at in terms of opportunities and threats. What are the opportunities that each of these different components offer us that might be able to help us pursue these opportunities here? Additionally, we might look for things that are happening in these areas trends in the legal environment, trends in the natural uh, in environment that might cause us threats in order to be able to, uh, that might be barriers to us actually pursuing what we're trying to pursue. So that's the macro environment. The other piece that we want to look at, uh, opportunities and threats, is in our micro environment. And there's, a, again, a variety of things that we can look at, but for sure what we want to look at are our customers, our suppliers, and our competitors. We want to understand our customer base. We want to understand our trends in our customer base, not just the ones that happened today or the ones that happened yesterday, but what's happening in our customer base going forward. And what are the opportunities there for us? And what are the things that might threaten our ability to be able to serve them well? The second is uh, suppliers. We are, uh, have a very strong need to have certain types of supply come to us. What's going on with the people that are supplying, supplying us? Are they good partners? Are they providing the things that we need? Are we able to actually build a mechanism and set of systems internally that is able to let the suppliers that come to us, at, such as local suppliers or regional suppliers, to help them grow? We have to ask ourselves, what, what is it there that might provide us opportunities or cause threats to the things that we're trying to achieve to achieve our ends? And finally, competitive situation. The competitive situation has intensified. Since the recession, we thought that everything would be getting better. In fact, it has. But the market continues to grow, but so does the competitive landscape. Because it's such a growing and important and lucrative market, the investor-owned organizations have deeply invested in this, and they're growing rapidly, gobbling up an enormous amount of that potential. We have to ask ourselves, how are we going to thrive in the competitive landscape? And this is another piece that we have to look for opportunities and things that might threaten us. So internally, we're looking for where do we need to be strong? What are the weaknesses that we need to, to uh, move towards strengths? Externally, we're looking for the opportunities and the, and the things that might threaten us. Together, all of this is a double click into a major SWOT analysis you might be able to do for your organization, which then would allow you to pursue this in a fast, smart way, which then ultimately allows you to have, achieve the vision and have the impact that you want. Thanks.